Do you see that purple pea? It's a purple pea. Which is right because you see all the purple on it? Those are King Tut purple peas and they are going in the ground today. Who's making all that noise? Hey, get out of get out of here! <laughs> snuck in. I didn't zip it all the way down. I left a little tiny switch and did you get any of my oh. She is a lucky duck slash chicken. Okay, hey, get out of here. Okay, apparently I have to zip it all the way down. To the ground. Uh -oh. This is one thing I noticed with this. I have to separate it because otherwise it gets caught in the little side plastic right here. This is two dump truck loads of compost. And this is what I'm going to be working into my garden in order to get the best results for all of my delicious food and flowers. So as you can see, the chickens follow me everywhere. They think that I'm gonna feed them all the time. <laughs> they won't leave me alone. To the point where I kind of do feed them all the time just to get them away from me. Because once I scatter the food, um, that's where they go and they'll pack at it until it's all gone. So what I'm hoping to do today is getting these peas in the ground and also planting some peas in the ground. I'm still waiting on a shipment from Eden Brothers. <sighs> I ordered, I think a quarter ounce of alderman peas and they were out and this was over six weeks ago and they emailed me and asked if it would be okay if they sent me a different kind of pea since they were out of that variety and I said sure don't care what it is I just want some more peas so because I could eat peas all day long and the problem is, is I'd like to save some I'd like to freeze them um, but I end up eating all of them making sure they're not gonna get my beautiful peas here I'm watching you frizzle frazzle so I fertilized these today Oh, no. oh, oh, look at, look at you. There's no safety from these chickens, I swear. This is why, this is all this lumber is here. It's, it's for the deer, yes, but it's also for the chickens because they are, they are crazy. You're crazy. You are. You're absolutely insane. I know it. So I made the mistake of tearing down some of the chicken fence uh, that we had surrounding the garden. Hey, hey. I'm watching you. Before we needed to. Uh, I did it when I was doing the raspberry uh, fence. I, I, I guess I needed to because I needed to get the raspberries on the other side of the fence. What are you doing? What are you doing? Want to sit with me? <sighs> so I guess I needed to because I needed to get the raspberries on the other side of the fence. So that was a good thing to do. But in doing so, it's allowed the chickens to... Hello, baby. It's allowed the chickens to... Uh, roam all over the garden. So when I put these peas in the ground, you're gonna eat the bottom of my boots? What, you gonna sit up on here? Yeah, you can't have that. You can't. I'm not gonna let you eat it. I'm not gonna let you. So, so they're, they have free reign all over the garden right now, which is fine as long as I don't have anything planted in there. <laughs> but I wanna put things in there, so I'm gonna have to put up fences all over the place. So let's figure that out. <laughs> so the first season that we were here, I actually used this raised bed that existed here at the property for my peas because, uh, so the gentleman that I purchased the house from let me come, I, we didn't move in until July. He let me come here in May and put my garden in, which was amazing. But I also didn't want um, it to get overtaken with weeds, so I used this, which I did not do anything to the soil. It was the soil that had been here for years. I just plugged in my peas and they ended up doing okay, but not well. I know they could have done much better. So um, now it's kind of just like storage. <laughs> it's a mess, it's all extra wire. Uh, I tried to save plants. So what happened is I ordered some uh, fruit trees 
last year and I can see some rabbit damage to one right now which is frustrating I didn't uh, figure that out before it happened so so last year I ordered one two three four five six seven eight fruit trees four plum and four peach and they came broken all of them the tops they were like busted in half I paid extra for like six or seven foot tall trees they just came busted they weren't properly secured and I was researching and they said if you take part of the tree and plop it into the ground that you might be able to save it and grow another tree out of the busted pieces. So that did not work for this. That did not work for this, but it did work for this. I have a living apricot tree right here. It's putting on buds and new growth. So um, I'm gonna have to put this <laughs> in a little tiny vestibule in my garden here that's why this is full of here because i was trying to save plants and i failed but i succeeded so there's always hope so i'm not going to use this for my peas this year i think maybe later or or i could clean it out and put some poop in it put some manure in it and then throw some seeds in there that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to clean this out I'm gonna throw a couple shovelfuls of manure in here and then put the, mix it up with the, the dirt in here. Look at all these weeds that grew up. Um, and then plant the peas. Yes, that's what I'm gonna do. Good idea, thanks. You're welcome. You wanna see a mess? So this ripped off in the fall. Huge windstorm ripped through and uh, clearly we didn't fix it. Look at this mess in here. Usually there's snakes in here, which is awesome. Look at all this stuff. So I have a whole lot of fertilizer. So some critters got in, which they always do, and did this. But guess what? It's perfectly dry. It's perfectly usable. I used it all throughout my new raspberry canes. Oh, here's my pea. I usually plant my peas on that, but I'm not, oh, I, sorry, sorry, I hit my microphone. I'm not gonna do that this year. I'm not. So. There's my tomato cages. I have those other shelving units in the back. I've got a whole bunch of tools here. And uh, I mean, a crazy number of pots. And most of the stuff was left here by um, the people that we bought the house from, which is a story that I'll have to tell you guys someday because my dad actually built this house and then it left the family and now it's back in the family. So I'm trying to see if I can see any snakes. I don't see anything. They're usually up. So. There's like a birdhouse up there with like a hole in the top. You see that? That's where they usually um, lay their eggs. So it's really cool in the, um, when the warmer temperatures come in, you can see they poke their heads out of that thing. And what's even funnier is they use this. They'll circle and curl themselves up in that and they'll poke their heads out. And so it's like, you'll be sitting there and all of a sudden a snake will come out of that thing. Am I freaking anybody out yet? I know I am. Oh, this is a giant clump that needs to get taken down because I keep <laughs> I keep tripping on it when I'm walking around the garden. Okay, so I got all the stuff out of this raised bed, but now I'm gonna go get uh, my gloves and I'm gonna get all these dead plants out. I'm gonna go get my, uh, my little trowel tool and then I'm gonna get the poop, put the poop in, work it into the soil, and then I'm gonna plant peas. So I just checked the forecast. The forecast shows we have a 23 degree night coming up in three days and my harvest guard has not arrived from the store yet. I'm, that's shipping on Monday or delivering on Monday. So I would like to hold off on putting those actual pea plants that are four or five inches tall into the ground until Wednesday. I'm gonna put them in the ground Wednesday after the killing frost because 23 is a killing frost. The peas might be fine, they might be, but I'd like to, uh, since I'm not gonna have my, oh wait. I will have my harvest guard on Monday. Okay, this is how quickly I changed my mind. <laughs> so I will put the peas in the ground because uh, the low tonight's 32 and then tomorrow is like fine and then the next day's fine and then 23 is the only real dangerous one and that should be after my harvest guard delivers on Monday. Okay, 
So the peas are going into the ground today. I am so flipping excited. I just don't know where they're going. And I'm gonna build that little cage around them. So, but I'm focusing here first. So let's do it. This is my favorite garden tool. It's called the claw. The label has since worn off. Oh, and there's dirt inside my gloves. That defeats the purpose. <laughs> so this I bought from my step grandparents for my very first garden as an adult. I think I was 23 years old, just bought my first house. I won't tell you how long ago that was. <laughs> and it's, it had the claw on it. I think it was some as seen on TV thing. Um, my step grandparents were garage sale royalty and they always were picking stuff up and hello. People drive by my house and beep all the time and I don't know who they are. Most of the time I know who they are, but I don't know who that vehicle was. It was a huge white pickup truck with a boat. Who the heck is that? If it's you, let me know. Anyway. Um, so I bought this at a garage sale that they had for $1 because even though I was their granddaughter, they weren't giving me anything. <laughs> garage sale royalty, I tell you. So I'm going to at first just use my hands to take out this like blech stuff. And then I'm going to use this to kind of move all the soil around. Oh, this is like ragweed. Oh. Some of it's rooted in there deeply. Look at that. Okay. And what are these? I don't even know what these are. They have curly bottoms. They almost look like bamboo. They're weeds. That's all I know. spread the peas out on top and I'm going to go through now and just kind of push them down with my finger. So this is a tray of radishes that I put in this three or four days ago. Oh, four, 414 it says and today is the 17th I believe. So, right? Oh, it's the 18th. So it, it's been four days. I'm losing track of time. So I'm, I did Charles Dowding's method of multi sowing for these. So in each little section of radishes, I have, well, some only have two, but I tried for four, four plants. Maybe some just didn't germinate yet. That's what I'm guessing. So what happens when you multi sow, and I'm not an expert on this. This is my first year trying this, is that you put, I guess the idea is, Charles always says, plants like to have friends to grow with. So they don't mind being together and they're not going to be smaller because they're together they actually when they grow they grow apart so they're able to grow to the bulk and then when you harvest them you har harvest the two outer radishes that are bigger and then you're leaving room for the ones inside to bulk up and then you'll have a second harvest off that same space so basically it's getting more production out of the same space so instead of one radish every three inches. I could get up to four radishes every three inches in my garden. So I'm gonna just prick these out very simply like that and plug them in. So this is something that he also does. He starts a lot of vegetables in small spaces and then puts them out in the garden together. So this is gonna allow the radishes to have space to grow, but grow together.
Okay, so I have my radishes in and I have the peas here. I don't even think I need to water them in because it's, it is wet, it's really wet. So I'm not gonna worry about that. They'll have exactly enough moisture for the peas to germinate and it'll dry out soon enough for these radishes. So really excited about that. So what I'm gonna do now is make that enclosure so that I can put my other peas into the ground. This is why I can't get anything done. So I'm in the middle of planting peas and figuring out where I'm gonna do that. And I decided, oh, I gotta move my blueberries. So I actually just tilled this area up to move my blueberries for a permanent home because I want all the perennial stuff to be in one spot. So I have my raspberry row. This will be the blueberry bed. That's gonna be asparagus. So definitely want everything in the same spot. So I'm doing that today too. Once again, plans change because my husband decided to start tilling, which means I had to move all of my strawberries. I had just thrown them in the ground last year when they came in so I didn't have a spot for them. Hi, hey, hey. And uh, so they had multiplied over here, right where he needed to till through. So uh, I just moved about 60 strawberry plants. You probably can't hear me at all. bushes pulled out. Eight of these are regular blueberries. I don't even know the variety. They were here when we moved in. And then two little ones. I bought pink pink lemonade blueberries. I didn't get any berries off them last year. They were brand new, but I have two of those. They're still quite small, uh, but they are sending out new growth, so we should have something new off of them this year. I also have four other bushes in the garage that I bought this year, um, so I'm going to be putting all of them together. Now, I'm not even sure if this is exactly where I'm going to put them. I'm going to figure out exactly where I want them and then put them in the ground. physically exhausted but it feels good to get the blueberries done i did the raspberries last weekend i did the blueberries this weekend they look phenomenal they look healthy they have more than tripled in size since two years ago when we first so when we first got here um they were overgrown with weeds and kind of ignored for a little while found them in the garden one day i was like oh these are blueberries the chickens are trying to get in <laughs> Can't them in now. So they were crowded. They had a lot of weeds, stubborn weeds coming up through. Couldn't get rid of them. So anyway, I've been. They they were spread way too far apart. They were like ten feet apart, um, just taking up a huge space in my garden space. And I knew I wanted to put them in a row, fairly close together. I think I planted them two and a half feet apart in that row because they'll grow up together. I mean, that's what if you go pick blueberries at a farm, that's what it looks like. So all of the bushes will grow in together. So I want to get, I want to double, I have 14 right now. I want to double that, uh, triple that, quadruple that. I want as many as I can. We eat a lot of blueberries and I freeze a lot of them. So anyway, I was in the middle of doing that or I was in the middle of doing, <laughs> I did so many things today. I can't even remember. I think I was taking care of the peas when Brad said they wanted to till, which I told you that already. So I was moving the strawberries and I look over and Mine was blown. Look at this. 
there were two peonies growing up in the middle of my garden, right by where the strawberries were. So what happened last year is I had an order, I think it was Dutch bulbs. Yes, it was Dutch bulbs. So Kvan Bergen, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce it. I need a pronouncer for that. I'll put it up on the screen. They follow me on Instagram. I love their stuff. So I ended up getting a late order. I had dahlias and, and peonies come at like the end of June. I was like, how, how do I do this? How do I do this? Um, and they looked dead. So I threw them in the ground, just anywhere. And nothing happened, they didn't sprout. And I had no idea that they were gonna overwinter and actually be peonies. So I just quickly dug them up and I need to put them somewhere because I have, I don't even know what they are. I don't even know what color they are or anything. But I'm so excited. Not that I don't have peonies, I have 235 peonies right over there, but every extra peony is a beautiful thing. So I'm going to put these somewhere. I don't really have a spot for them, but I, I kind of want to showcase them because they're, they're special peonies. I feel like they might be red. I might, I'm going to look up in my order and see what I ordered. I'm going to do that right now. Found it. Found it. Found it. I found it. Okay. So it says peony pink Hawaiian coral. I ordered that in February. February 25th, 2019. And it didn't ship until May 30th. It came with my strawberries, so that makes sense because I had a whole bunch of dahlias. And then I got actually a delay on different dahlias anyway oh, memories so these are Hawaiian coral that's exciting I'm gonna put them in the ground and see if they grow okay so this was kind of crazy this video um, so many things that I talked about and did today and uh, so many things that I didn't get to do that I need to do soon so that includes put the peas in the actual ground and the onions need to go in the ground. Everything in here is gonna go in the ground after Tuesday, after that killing freeze. So maybe before Tuesday, depends on when I get this um, harvest guard. So these are my hands. This is how I live. I'm dirty all the time. So all the lettuces are going good. My snaps are great. My lysianthus is great. My sweet peas look phenomenal. These need to go. <sighs> they all need to go outside. I want blooms and I want them soon. Cabbage is looking good. Oh my gosh, could you be cuter? Why are they so cute? Look at this, look at the germination on this. So this is buttercup lettuce and I think that that's not, because that's one purple one. And I got almost 100% germination. That one didn't germinate. And that one. That one did, but it didn't go into the soil at all, so it's dried out. Anyway, beautiful. And what's this? Blue kale. This is some blue kale. This is um, Merlot lettuce. It's getting windy out, so I better go finish what I was doing, and uh, I gotta find the strawberries need a little home for tonight before they pass away, so. And I gotta get these peonies in the ground, so. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.